Hi guys, welcome back to my channel English in a Blink and today I am back with another of Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar. This one is actually very, very uh, close to my heart because this is the first play that I had read and since then there is no stopping. I just became a fan of Shakespeare's writing. Anyway, so without wasting time, let's go. So the play opens uh, by lots of people who were gathered and they were they were celebrating Caesar's triumphant return from war. And uh, the victory was actually marked by public games, which Caesar's protege, Mark Antony, uh, also takes part in. And when, when Caesar was actually on his way to the arena, he was stopped by a stranger. And he the stranger warned him. Uh, he said, oh, you know what? You should beware of the Ides of Mars. Yes, so that's what he said. And then uh, his fellow senators like Cassius and Brutus, they, they actually were a little suspicious of Caesar's reaction to the power that he, that he holds. Um, they were actually, they feared that he might accept the offer and then uh, he be, might become the emperor. Um, actually, Cassius was a little jealous he because he was also one of the generals himself and he was actually very jealous of caesar uh although brutus was was a little balanced he was he was a friend and uh, his i mean he he was not a uh, worry of uh, caesar he was not jealous of him either but the conspirators like Cassius and Casca, they were trying to to make Brutus believe that, you know, Caesar might actually accept the crown. Uh, although Caesar refused the crown three times. But the conspirators, they were, you know, they were still, like I said, wary of his aspirations. They still thought that uh, Caesar is actually very, very, um, he, he might take it. He might become so... Yeah, that's what they thought. And then Cassius and Casca uh, and their allies, they actually planned false documents so that they could manipulate Brutus to join their cause uh, so that all of them can just remove Caesar. And after doing so, uh, they, they went to see Brutus and actually persuades Brutus to come to their, you know, to join their plan. And then together, all of them, they planned Caesar's death. Now, Brutus actually is a little bit troubled. And uh, so he confides in his wife, Portia. And uh, on the 15th of March, Caesar's wife, um, Calpurnia, she also uh, tells um, Caesar not to go to Senate. She's like, oh, I'm not I, I had these visionary dreams and I'm not feeling confident. You should not go. But of course, Caesar denies that. <clears throat> and he he nevertheless goes to the capital and at the capital, he is stabbed by each, each conspirator, you know. And Brutus, as we all know, he gives the final blow. And that's when Caesar utters the famous phrase, eat to brute. Yeah, so that's how that's what happened, and Caesar is dead now. Against Cassius's advice, Brutus he allows Mark Antony to speak, to speak a funeral oration for Caesar in the marketplace. Now he's allowed only under one condition: that first, Brutus must address the people to explain uh, that the conspirators' reason and their you know fears of Caesar's ambition. Now after Brutus speaks, the crowd actually becomes calm and supports his cause. However, Antony, in a speech, he questions the motives of the conspirators and reminds the crowd of Caesar's benevolent actions and of his refusal to accept the crown thrice. He also reads Caesar's will, in which Caesar leaves public land and money to each Roman citizen. Now, Antony's speech actually stirs the crowd into a murderous riot, and the conspirators, they are actually forced to flee from the city. Now, Brutus and Cassius, they, of course, they'll have to gather an army. Uh, so they gather an army and they prepare to fight the forces which are led by Mark Antony. And Antony, uh, he's joined by Caesar's great nephew, Octavius. And uh, so both of them, they, you know, they prepare their army. After making amends, they prepare, you know, they prepare to engage uh, Antony's army at Philippi. All right, despite Cassius's uh, misgivings about the site. So they were not able to decide where is it going to happen. But finally, 
they decide a place uh, but brutus actually is is not very happy he he's in a lot of guilt and in all of that he brutus he stoically receives news of his wife's suicide in rome so he's he's even more disturbed now now in the battle the republicans which are led by brutus they at the start they appear to be winning but when cassius's messenger's horse seems to be overtaken by the enemy now cassius fears uh, that now you know there's no chance of them winning so he gets his servant to help him to quick death and after fighting you know after finding cassius's body brutus also commits suicide now he believes uh, this to be the only honorable option left for him antony on the triumphant you know now they they are the ones who who are victorious in the battlefield he actually praises brutus and he he calls him the noblest roman of them all and orders a formal funeral before he and octavius return to rule in rome yes so that's how the story ends brutus is he commits suicide cassius is dead yes all right so that that was your julius caesar and like i always say if you liked it you don't have to do much press the like button spread the word share it with your friends until we meet next time bye for now